This video is meant to give an introduction to tissue culture techniques, specifically for passaging adherent cells and maintaining your cultures. I want to say that there are a lot of great videos out there that go through the actual process of doing cell culturing in the hood and show videos on that. And while, while we will cover that to some degree in this video, this is really intended more to talk about a little bit of the theory behind why we do the things we do, and then also talk about how you actually do it in the lab. So first, just some important things to know before you go into any tissue culture room. The key thing about tissue culture is that that room is extremely sterile. You never want cells to get contaminated, and they do get contaminated very easily because they are growing in very rich media, and bacteria like that media. So you have to take a lot of precautions when you're in this room to make sure that nothing gets contaminated. So that means things like protective equipment. So of course, like gloves, white coats, tying back your hair, things like that. Um, but it also means being really careful with what you touch and how you touch it and where you put your hands. So the first thing to keep in mind, especially when you're new to the TC room, is to wear gloves from the second you enter to the room to the second you leave. You don't wanna to touch anything, especially inside hoods or incubators, without gloves on. Most rooms will also have 70% ethanol solutions, and so it's a good practice to occasionally spray down your hands and spray down the things you're working with to make sure that they're staying truly sterile. When you're actually working in the hood, it's very important that you don't touch your tips to anything else that they don't need to be touching. So that means that when you are doing something in the hood, you put the tip into whatever solution you're trying to get, and then you put it immediately onto the next thing, and then you throw it away. It should never touch any surface or any bottle or the outside of anything, or your hands, ever at any point during your TC. You want to make sure that anything you open, you open inside the hood after spraying it down. Things that are used for TC should never be opened outside the hood because then they are contaminated. And if anything is going into the hood, make sure you're wiping it down with 70% ethanol before you put it in. This is things like new plates or new packaging that you might be opening inside the hood but it's not a replacement for something that you may have opened outside the hood. Once you've opened a solution outside the hood, it's really considered not sterile and you probably shouldn't use it unless you filter it or somehow sterilize it before bringing it inside the hood. So now that we have the sterile practices down, let's talk a little about what tissue culture actually is. So it's basically the process by which we maintain cells for experiments and seed out new experiments. It's very important to do correctly because it is the source for most of our experiments. So a lot of our experiments are done as cellular assays, and if you don't have the cells, then you can't really do the assays. So it's important to keep a constant source of cells going and a constant pool going so that you can always go back to that pool and get whatever cells you need to do the experiment that you're interested in doing. So we'll talk a little bit about the protocol, and then if you would like to access the protocol later, it'll be available on our website, and it is available on many websites to look at. Um, but the basic process is that you will first prepare, so you will warm up your reagents. They should be warmed up for about 30 minutes before use. You'll make sure that your cells look good, and you'll sort of figure out what your plan is for the day, what kind of tissue culture you want to do, what cells need to be split, what cells just need media changes, those types of things. Then for the cells that do need to be passaged, you'll first wash them. So you'll aspirate out the media. You'll add in sterile PBS, volume according to the dish that you're using. You'll swirl it a little bit and then you'll aspirate the PBS. Once you've aspirated the PBS, you'll add in your trypsin solution, and this is what actually detaches the cells. It sort of lyses all the bonds between the cell and the plate and creates a suspension of cells. You'll wait about three to five minutes. You can put it at 37 degrees in the incubator to make it go a little faster. And then you will collect the cells in a prepared tube with media. So what this means is that while you're waiting for that three to five minutes, you should prepare tubes for every single cell that you are 
um, detaching and put some media in them. Ideally, just as much media as you put trips in on the plates. And so then when you add your trypsin cells into this um, tube, the trypsin will be deactivated because there is media in the tubes. And that is important because trypsin is toxic to cells if it has been exposed for a very long time. So you do want to make sure that you limit the exposure to trypsin, and that's why we say five minutes. And that's why you always check and make sure your cells are detached. And as soon as they are, you want to put them in these prepared tubes with media so that the trypsin can no longer affect the cells. Then, as we've already discussed, trypsin is toxic to cells, so you do want to isolate the cells out from that trypsin and media mix. So next, you're going to spin the cells down, and that's going to form a nice pellet of cells. So now you'll have your tube with a nice cell pellet at the bottom, and all of your trypsin and media will be up here. You can then aspirate out all of this and just keep your cell pellets. It's a good idea to leave a little extra media at the bottom, especially when you first start, because that tiny bit of extra media is not going to hurt the cells, but it will help you make sure that you don't accidentally aspirate your pellet as well. And then once you've done this, you're at the point where you can do anything you would like with the cells. So at this point, you might decide that you want to harvest these cells for an experiment, and so then you would proceed with that protocol. You might decide that you want to count these cells and seed them out for a special treatment or condition, and so then you could do that. Or you might decide that you just want to maintain these cells and keep them going, and so you'll just take a portion of them and plate them out again into plates that you can maintain and keep passaging. So when you start TC, what reagents should you prepare? The three things that you always need are going to be your media, your trypsin EDTA solution, and then PBS for the wash. And these should be put into a 37 degree water bath approximately 30 minutes before you plan on starting tissue culture. The other thing to make sure that you check before you start passaging your cells is to make sure that your cells are healthy and that they're confluent appropriately for passaging. So when I say cells are confluent, what that means is looking at what percent of the area you think the cells cover on the plate. It's a very rough estimation. It's not um, a very highly technical calculation. You just look at the cells and you estimate how much they are spread over the plate. So for example, for this, I might say that this is approximately 70% confluent because you can see that the cells are covering most of the plate, but there's still some spaces here where the cells could grow. Maybe you'd say 80% confluent. So you usually don't want to culture cells if they're under 30 or 40% confluent because then they still have tons of space to grow. You might just change the media and give them some more time to grow. On the other hand, if something is 100% confluent, you definitely want to make sure to passage it because those cells no longer have any room to grow and so they're going to start dying very soon. You also want to make sure that your cells are not contaminated. And the way you tell that cells are contaminated is that when you look at them, instead of seeing this nice, healthy, clean background, you're going to see all these gross black dots in the background. And these are bacteria. And the other thing you will see is that instead of being pink and clear, your media is going to become yellow and cloudy. And it's really this cloudiness that is the biggest indicator of bacterial growth because when bacteria grows in media, it tends to become increasingly opaque. Media can sometimes turn yellow just because the cells have overgrown and they've used up a lot of the nutrients in the media and made it highly acidic. But that cloudiness combined with the yellow tells you that these cells are most definitely contaminated. So that's something you always want to check for, especially when you're just starting out with tissue culture, because contamination is fairly common um, and can happen to really anyone. And so you just want to be consistently careful about what you're doing in TC and make sure that you're checking everything very carefully every day. So as we've already discussed, once you have heated up your media and you have checked your cells for contamination, you're basically ready to passage. And so here I just want to show that this is what a hood typically looks like. And so there is sort of a glass thing in the front. You can see the line right here. And she is doing all her work with gloves inside the hood. You can see that she opened this pipette inside the hood and that all of her reagents are capped because 
None of them have been opened until they were inside the hood. So that's very important. And now she's going to use this pipette to take out the media that is in her flask, and she's going to go ahead and wash it with PBS and then put the trypsin on. So this is your PBS and this is your trypsin. And she's just going to do what we discussed and put the PBS on and then put the trypsin on and let the cells detach. After that, she spun down the cells, and you can see here that she got a nice pellet of white cells at the bottom. So now she can remove all this media and trypsin from the cells leaving just a little bit at the bottom. So now we have just a little bit of liquid to protect our pellet. And then she can go ahead and replate those cells into whatever plate she wants. Importantly, you should only replate a subset of cells. You don't want to replate all of them because the whole point of doing this was to cut down the number of cells in the plate. So you should always replate half the cells or maybe even just 25% of the cells. The second thing is that you have to add media on top because cells need media to grow. And since we've removed all the liquid here, there's not any media in this uh, tube anymore. So once you've resuspended your cells and added whatever amount to your plate, you have to make sure to cover it with the appropriate amount of media and spread the cells out so that they can grow. If you're wondering how much reagent to use, um, these tables are very useful. And so this is one that I found online. Thermo also has a great one. A lot of different companies have very nice tables that give you an idea of how much reagent to use based on the size of the plate. So these are your dishes. This here is a 10 centimeter dish, which is fairly common. You have all your different well plates, and then you also have your flasks, of which T25s and T75s are very commonly used. And so you can see that this tells you how much trypsin to use here and this tells you how much growth media to use. And in general, the amount of PBS you use for your wash can be somewhere between the trypsin and the growth media. Um, a lot of people like to use just as much BBS for the wash as they use growth media. So you can follow these for PBS as well. And then finally, I just wanna discuss what you can do with your cells once you have finished um, pelleting them down and you're ready to move to the next step. So one thing you could do is count your cells and find out how many you have. If you want to count your cells, we use what's called a hematocytometer. And the way that works is you mix 10 microliters of blue dye with 10 microliters of cells. This dye is called tripan blue, and it is basically a stain for viability of cells. So it highlights your cells in kind of this glowy white color that allows you to see which cells are alive. You then add those to the hematocytometer, as you can see here, where there's this little cover slip and this person is pipetting the blue cell dye mixture into the hematocytometer. And then you're gonna put it under the microscope. And when you put it under the microscope and focus it, you will see this grid. And in this grid, you wanna make sure to count at least four boxes. So a lot of people count just the corner boxes. You count this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then you would go ahead and average your counts. So for example, if I got counts of eight, nine, eight, and nine, let's just say, then my average would be 8.5. So 8.5 would be the number that I would carry forward. So we'll call this number X. And once you have this number, you can use it to calculate how many cells you have per milliliter of solution. So what you will do is since we did a one to two dilution to start with, because we did 10 of dye and 10 of cells, you're gonna multiply by two to start with. So you'll get 17. And then you're gonna multiply that times 10 to the fourth. So we'll add four zeros. So we have 170,000 cells per ml in this sample. And this is useful to know sometimes for experiments, and it's also useful to know if you wanted to seed very specific amounts of cells into well plates for an experiment. Some experiments require that you start with exactly the same number of cells for every group, and so you wouldn't want to count and make sure that you have the same number and that you seed the same number. And then you can use this number to calculate, for example, if I wanted 2,000 cells, I could use this to calculate how many microliters should I add to get 2,000 cells, and so on. 
So then, like we talked about, once you've counted, you can go ahead and seed these into well plates or other types of plates for assays. So we have 6, 12, 24, and 96 well plates that we use for different assays. And depending on what you're doing, you would choose the correct plate and go ahead and plate them at the appropriate density. And then finally, what you should always do, even if you do count and seed some experiments, you should always make sure to maintain some cells. And that's because you don't want to use up all of your cells in your experiment and then have no cells to do any future experiments with. You always want to make sure that you keep some going for future experiments. So always make sure that at least one plate gets put aside just for saving and continuing so that you have future cells. So when you maintain, we do what's called a split. So we can do a one to two split, which means that we started with one plate and then we made two plates from it. Or it means that every new plate has 50% of the cells from the old plate. Similarly, you can do one to three or one to four splits. And so it's just important to know what these mean. If someone comes in and tells you, go do a one to four split on the cells, what that means is that you take one plate and you make four plates out of it. Or you make one new plate that has 25% of the cells from the original plate. And this is because, as we talked about before, the whole point of splitting is to make sure that the cells have enough room to grow. So you want to make sure that you don't put all the cells on the same plate. You want to give them some room and only put a subsection of the cells onto that plate. So that's all for our intro to TC. Thank you all so much for listening. If you want to see more of this type of content, please, please feel free to follow us on Twitter at Ahmed Labin W or to subscribe to this channel to see more of this type of content. Thanks again.